Welcome to the Future of Field Service podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Nicastro. Strategic alignment has become a very important focus as companies are innovating at faster paces than ever, um, transforming their businesses in different ways, uh, looking for um, ways to introduce new customer value propositions, um, dealing with issues related to changes in the workforce, um, and the idea of you know, working toward a common goal and a common mission as an entire organization has become super, super important. Uh, I'm excited to be joined today by Marie Lepaho, who is the Vice President of Corporate Marketing and Communications at SimCorp, to talk with us a bit about their defining characteristics of strategic alignment. Marie, welcome to the Future of Field Service podcast. Thank you so much. And thank you for reminding me here. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Okay, so before we dig into the conversation related to strategy and strategic alignment, uh, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your role at SimCorp. Well, like you already told, I'm a VP Corporate Marketing and Communications, and um, I lead this function globally. Mm -hmm. I'm also a member of our executive management team, and uh, I've been leading this uh, strategy process at Simcorp Group. Okay, good. And how long have you been at Simcorp? Uh, for two years. Okay, and what's your background prior to, to this role? Well, my background is in marketing and communications in different, different kinds of uh, multinational and uh, domestic companies in Finland. Okay. Great. In electricity field mainly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of a different perspective from that, a from that bit, background. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. All right, so SimCorp um, has recently undergone a process of revisiting, revamping, reshaping strategy to um, create this better alignment that we, as I just mentioned, know is, is super important. Um, so we're going to talk today about some of the guiding forces of how you have reshaped your strategy and, and created better alignment um, but let's talk a little bit first about the, the purpose for this initiative. So what are some of the reasons, you know, within the market, within the company, within just trends uh, in, in your industry and in the world, um, that it was important for SimCorp to, to undergo this project of sort of, you know, um, taking stock in strategy and, and looking at how to uh, create better alignment? Uh, well, our business uh, in logistics automation solutions uh, grows fast and develops with giant leaps. And uh, we want, want, of course, want to help our customers to, su to succeed in their future business. So we need to be prepared. We need to be innovative and a couple of steps ahead. Mm -hmm. So we have been and are growing. And now is the time to take the, uh, that growth even more seriously and plan according to, accordingly to that. And that's why we, uh, at the beginning of our st strategy work, uh, study trends carefully. Mm -hmm. And the trends that you studied, what can you talk a little bit about how you did that? Like, what were some of the sources of insights that you collected? What were some of the things that you examined to think through you know, where you wanted to, to take the, the direction? Well, the logistics business trends are, are the most important, of course, because it's, it's our business. So we studied and there, we found the three uh, main trends mm -hmm. uh, and they are complexity, shorter lead times and increasing share of online. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then we, of course, studied also because the world is also changing and we studied the mega trends and wanted to align our work and plans together with the global mega trends. Okay. And they are sustainability and automation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's interesting. Uh, one of the things that comes up in almost every conversation I have these days is the pace of change, you know, and to your point, this, this idea of needing to stay a few steps ahead of your customers and be anticipating, you know, not just their current needs, but what, what are they going to need from SimCorp in a year or three years or five years and be making sure that you're taking steps to, you know, be able to meet those needs. Um, 
I think the idea of uh, complexity is is a big one, right? I mean, yeah. <clears throat> you have um, there there's complexity from from many layers, right? I mean, there's complexity in in the world right now. There's complexity in various industries. There's complexity in the workforce. There's complexity in technology, right? And at the end of the day, you know what customers want is is an outcome. They want what they need and and they want peace of mind and they want predictability and you know they um so to do that it just requires a lot of effort to master that complexity so that you know it it's in many ways invisible to the customers, right? So definitely um a lot going on that that makes it very important for organizations to um, create this strategic alignment. I think it's, you know, if you look historically at how business businesses have operated, um, the pace of change wasn't as fast, and it was okay in many instances to have, you know, some some different silos that were working toward initiatives because things weren't changing, you know, as quickly as they do today, and so. You know, it's really um, adjusting our thinking and adjusting our our working processes to make sure that we're, you know, reshaping the way the business plans and and creates goals and and measures progress to be aligned with you know where the market is is today. Um, okay, so as we talked about the process that that you uh, and the SimCorp team have, have undergone, you know, we really talked about four major themes that guided the development of the new strategy. And I want to talk a little bit about each of those um, and, you know, why the theme was so important, what, you know, what it looked like as you went through this process, et cetera. So the first is prioritization. So talk a little bit about the role of prioritization in creating strategic alignment. Uh, well, we have professionals working in various areas of work from assembly to finance and everything between. And each of them have a variety of projects and priorities, uh, you know, everyday duties and uh, routines. And then add it to the, to the mix that, that the work in three big, uh, that we work in three big segments, mm -hmm. uh, tire industry, warehouse and distribution industry, and then service. Uh, each of them are demanding. Uh, so prioritization is the key when aligning everyone's workload so that the resources match from each function. We needed uh, common priorities because in a global company, everyone has to work towards mutual goals and in the same rhythm. And uh, when we think about uh, that in today's hectic world, uh, prioritization gives peace and clarity. And uh, we have a new purpose statement and it is uh, we guarantee profitability and peace of mind. And uh, when we made this, we thought about that when we give our to our customers, you know, uh, profitability and peace of mind, we also get it at Simcorp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. So, you know, there's a lot of research that's been done if you look at employee engagement and employee satisfaction on, you know, understanding expectations, right? And so this, uh, again, you know, this conversation around prioritization is a big one because you know, I've talked with uh, a lot of folks that work in organizations where, you know, it's just every week the priority changes, you know, it's so it, it's almost constantly putting out fires, right? It's, oh, well, last week we were going to focus on this, but now this week is this is happening and we need we need to do this. And when you operate that way, it's hard to make actual progress, right? And so there's also this idea of what gets measured gets uh, makes traction or, or you know gets action. And I think that that's true when it comes to looking at okay, what are our strategic objectives? And we we can't prioritize you know forty of them, right? Like no one can effectively consume and on a daily basis, you know, measure progress or work toward, you know, too many um, competing uh, priorities or not even competing, but just, you know, uh, parallel, right? So there has to be some focus. I think 
the other big thing here related to prioritization, um, and, and I've talked about this quite a bit on the podcast and in different articles, is this idea of, you know, the pace of innovation, right? So, you know, there's mastering the day-to-day business and making sure that um, you're operating effectively, that you're meeting customer needs, that things are going smoothly, that you're handling all of that complexity, but then there's the idea of all of the forward thinking, planning, and you know, strategy to innovate the business to not only meet those needs today, but be two steps ahead, like you said, right? And so it's doubly complex because you're talking about prioritizing what needs to be done in the present day to make sure that you are um, optimized. And then there's prioritizing the strategic priorities for innovation and, and transformation to meet the needs of those customers in, you know, two, three, five years. So I think, um, you know, the, the concept is super important. Now, how did you all kind of narrow it down, right? So you landed on, if I remember correctly, you, you landed on six key areas of focus out of, I, I'm assuming quite a few, right? And and yeah. so how did you kind of decide what was um, most important for the key focus? And then how frequently will you be revisiting that to see if you need to sort of uh, change those, those priority areas? Well, we have chosen the, the focus, uh, key focus areas, the battles that we are, we are going to win. And uh, uh, this, is, this strategy is for, is for 24. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, during the stra- strategy period, every year we will be revisiting mm-hmm. that how we are doing and should we, you know, uh, change the direction or correct some things, clarify some things. Mm-hmm. I, I think the strategy work is constant work. It's not that we have done our strategy and that's it right. for the coming three years, but it's it's you know, constant work all the time. Yeah, it is. And that's a really good point. You know, if you're looking at creating this strategic alignment, you need to be examining um, how frequently are the key stakeholders of the business communicating, right? Because what you don't want to do is say, okay, we did this initial, you know, sort of uh, evaluation and, and setting strategy process. Now everyone go do your parts and we'll come back in a year and see how it's going, right? I mean, because, you know, people are going to learn things as they go, you know, there's going to be struggles and there's going to be wins. And if you're not sharing those among those key stakeholders, you risk, you know, um, fueling or feeding those silos, right? I mean, you, you have to have that visibility um, across the business to be able to ensure that you are making progress and that you're also all, you know, staying on the same page, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And of course, that people believe in that and uh, are really, you know, uh, buy that in a way that they are involved. Yes, yes. And we're going to come to that. Now, number two, the, the second key uh, area is globalization. So, you know, you at, at SimCorp, you know, were looking at the growth and realizing that there needed to be better globalization of, of strategy. So talk a little bit about that. Well, we have had entities and customers around the world for, for many years, for tens of years. Uh, but being global doesn't only mean that we are present there in some countries. Uh, Uh, It means understanding and including, you know, different cultures, languages, and personalities. Uh, With this new strategy uh, alignment, we wanted to clarify internally and what it really means to be a global company. And uh, we took the time to really understand and analyze what global means for our processes, for our customers, and for ourselves. And... uh, we came to the conclusion that truly global means that the customer experience is equal, no matter where in the world, and customer experience is a direct result of good employee experience for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the third key area is harmonization. So explain to me the difference between globalization and harmonization. Well, in harmonization, it's uh, it's about, um, you know, to to reach the consistent high quality around the world, it requires harmonization. It's about the 
processes in a way that mm -hmm. before being able to do that completely, we needed to understand how our, our processes were, were functioning and find the best practices mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's the, that's the difference. They are very much connected to each other. And uh, we talk about globalization and we have harmonization processes in, mm -hmm. in the global process. So would it be fair, just to make sure I'm understanding, would it be fair to say that the globalization was more in the thinking around how do we take our truly global footprint and standardize it in a way that is true to everyone? And then the harmonization is really the action of the processes below that to bring that vision to reality. Does that? Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And I think, you know, again, <clears throat> that, that idea of the, the first part of it, the thinking part, right. The, you know, understanding that every, every country, every region, every area of the business, you know, um, I think when, when companies standardize things globally, it's always tricky, right. Because every region feels that they're, their own entity and they do it the yeah. best way. And, you know, there's a lot of emotion tied to that. So it can be difficult to honor the, the hard work they've done to create, you know, whatever processes and, and, you know, um, strategy they have, but also help them understand the value in as an organization taking, you know, a more consistent approach. So you know, it's, it's easy to run through that on a list of things, but, um, but I know that it's far harder than <clears throat> it sounds. And so, um, no, but again, you're still right. You're still right. <laughs> yeah, but it's important, you know, and it's, yeah. it, that's where you get back to the people part, right. Which is, you know, if you don't consider everyone's, you know, viewpoints and thoughts and ideas and hard work, um, when you're making some strategic changes, you know, then people get disconnected and, and disenfranchised in what that mission is because they don't feel that their, you know, work to that point has been valued, right? So how do you make everyone understand, hey, you know, you've done a great job and, you know, any change we make isn't related to you not having been effective, but here's why it's important to all of us, right? And so, I guess that kind of brings us to the fourth point, which is connection, right? And this is sort of the, the people part. And um, I think when we spoke about this, you know, it's not just about change management, because unfortunately, I've spoke on this podcast a few times about my frustration with change management, because <clears throat> when I talk with companies about any sort of change, and I ask them, you know, what were the biggest missteps or lessons learned? It's always related to change management. Well, we could have done a better job with change management. The hardest part was the people, you know, and yet it is continually de-emphasized, under-prioritized, under-invested in, you know, because I think for a variety of reasons, but I think that people also see it as this one, like you said, this one-time process. Okay, we'll set our strategy and then we're done we'll manage the change and then we're done, right? And it's it's not that way. I mean, so I like that we frame this as connection because it's ongoing, right? It has to be an ongoing focus of, are our employees invested in our company mission? Are they invested in our strategy? And if not, how do we help them more? How do we help them feel more connected? So talk a little bit about, you know, um, how you've, you've connected the strategy and the mission to uh, the, the employees within the company. Okay. Well, strategy is only strategy uh, when everyone understands it uh, and remembers and follows it in the same ways. Uh, and we, in this process, we wanted to bring the strategy close to our everyday work. So uh, strategy can easily be something distant, difficult to understand and to follow. Some there on the, on the top level and uh, the management is doing something and uh, no one else uh, understands and is not interested in that. And uh, we didn't want to create that kind of strategy and just, just leave it to the gathering. Mm -hmm. uh, our goal was to be able to really prioritize our work 
and to support the collaboration with, between functions and to grow in a controlled manner. Mm -hmm. We have so many big things going on at the same time because we have been growing for, for a long time already, but now, now we want to do it so that we, we involved uh, every simpler in some ways in this process. Mm -hmm. We started in, in January and uh, we interviewed the key persons extensively. Mm -hmm. We have had a lot of workshops and uh, then we have sent a couple of queries asking about important things and uh, people could be involved and give comments and uh, ideas for the strategy work. And uh, this process was well thought and planned because we wanted to hear your, everyone's opinion, but also uh, to do it in a controlled manner so, mm -hmm. that, so that not everyone can be involved in everything, but anyway. Right everyone could have had just the say to the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting how this idea of connection is tied really to the other elements. So like you said, strategy is only effective when it's understood and can be executed, right? And so I think that goes back to when it can be understood, to me, it ties back to prioritization. No one is going to understand, you know, a list of 30 strategic priorities, right? I mean, so so you have to simplify that down yeah. to some degree for it to be consumable, repeatable, to be something that people can keep top of mind, right? And then, you know, something that can be executed. And that, again, you know, you can have clarity around, you know, here's our six key areas of strategy. But yeah. if if you get there and then you say, okay, and go go do this, however you you will regions countries locations right mm -hmm. then you know it's sort of that um that communication game right like things get lost in translation and some things are interpreted one way and some things are interpreted another way so you have to have that globalization and harmonization to make sure that you know not only are you creating a consumable list of priorities, but you are ensuring that people are clear on how they're expected to, you know, make progress toward those, those priorities. Um, and it's very, very important to have a proper implementation, you know, communication implementation plan in a way that we are going to have workshops so that everyone understands that what is my role in this strategy and what right. is my team's role in this strategy. Mm -hmm. So it will last a long time. It, it, it is not ready yet. It was yeah. launched it's, it's not ready. It's going to continue. Like I said. Yeah. All the time, yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, there has to have been some challenges along the way. Uh, so, um, what were some of the, uh, challenges that you've encountered and, and how did you navigate those? Well, because we are a global company and we have offices in six countries, of course, we had, uh, the time zone, um, mm -hmm a little bit difficult because uh, it, it had to make, we had to be in a way, innovative in a way that how to include everyone efficiently without overbearing their workload. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, it was easy to gather the necessary information from all functions with those queries and everything. And, uh, but then going through all the data and find the diamonds, was hard work and required many conversations and reflections with the organization. Mm -hmm. And um, then there's one thing that I wouldn't call this a challenge, but something to have in mind uh, was also the fact that our sin workers work in many different uh, tasks in many, many different uh, responsibility areas. So mm -hmm. we have professionals working in, you know, workshop insights, mechanics, warehouse, everywhere. And we have, uh, you know, uh, people in office, software to engineering, they are different places. They don't have mm -hmm. always the connection and they can't uh, conversate in the, in the same ways. So we wanted to involve everyone, but uh, everyone's job includes different aspects. And right. uh, we wanted to create a strategy that truly really is connected to our everyday work. Mm -hmm. just, just a strategy, but it, it really has to be connected and, uh, and the, it can't be something new, but it has to be connected and to our values and also mm -hmm. to our customer experience. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to a point you made, which is the data, right? So 
you have these, these workshops and these meetings and you're, you're involving as many people as you can in the appropriate ways so that everyone feels they have uh, a say in, in this. Um, you were researching trends and all of those things. When do you decide, okay, we could examine data and have workshops forever, yeah. <laughs> but we need to make <laughs> yeah, some that. decisions and set the strategy and then get going. And of course, it's it's an ongoing effort. It's a it's a continual work in progress. But I mean, you have to start somewhere. Like you have to kind of make a judgment call at some point of okay, enough discussing, enough investigating. Yeah. Here's what we land on. Here's how we move forward. So how did you kind of, you know, make that decision or get to that point? When we, we made the final decisions, uh... Uh, uh, some weeks ago, mm -hmm. and there's a there's a person in our organization who is you know in charge of this implementation process. Mm -hmm. There are certain development uh, uh, streams, development processes that will be uh, you know worked on, and um, we have chosen the specific one. And of course, there will be uh, strategies for functions and regions and everything. But mm -hmm. the, the work is now the development work has started already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a, it's a tricky thing because you, the idea of getting input is important. The idea of doing due diligence is important, but, you know, sometimes I think companies let that um, paralyze them from action, right? You know, it's, you can kind of get lost in an endless cycle of planning and talking and researching before you actually make some hard decisions. And, you know, the reality is, um, again, when we look at the pace of change uh, today, that that's not a good idea, right? I mean, you're, you're better off, um, you know, making some decisions and needing to course correct than you are staying in sort of an endless cycle of, you know, uh, analysis. Um, so, okay. Uh, Mari, what would you say is the biggest lesson that you as an individual learned throughout this process? Well, this has been very, very, you know, exciting and interesting journey. And I have to say that uh, to listen and to plan well, mm -hmm. uh, because balancing the everyday work with something as extensive as strategy work can be difficult also mm -hmm. to me because I have my responsibilities mm -hmm. and then, then I have been leading this process. Uh, but I think that the, with the strong project management, planning agendas, meeting those deadlines, uh, very strict, in a way, discipline that mm -hmm. can be done. Mm -hmm. Because everyone has their duties and everyone says that, should I, you know, participate in this or should I do my, new, you know, daily routines? Right, so, right. Yeah. It's a very important point, and I think it's one for businesses to consider too, in the sense of to the degree you want any layers of your workforce to be involved in you know, strategy and innovation, <clears throat> you really need to think about how that fits with their day-to-day -day demands, right? And you know, is there steps that we can take to create space for them to do that work? Because I agree that the input is invaluable. Um, but, you know, I've talked a bit here in, in this forum about the, the weight it puts uh, on, on leadership to be responsible for both day-to-day -day operations and innovation, right? And how do we make sure that, that we're having realistic expectations and not creating too much burnout, I guess, is, yeah. is the key. Right. Yeah. Um, last question, Mari, is what impact do you think this uh, this process, this effort will have um, on SimCorp as a business and on your customers? Well, our employer experience will be globally harmonized mm -hmm. and higher quality. And that ensures and shines the stronger customer experience. Mm -hmm. That's our target. And uh, with this strategic alignment, we wanted to ensure that uh, we have the proper tools and resources to grow in a conjunct manner and without the possible growing pains that may mm -hmm. happen if a company grows too fast and without any plans. Right. Our end goal is to have globally harmonized customer experience, no matter where in the world, and also a globally harmonized uh, employer experience. Mm -hmm. uh, our good team spirit 
uh, which we call Simcox spirit mm-hmm. inside the company. It needs to be seen and felt throughout the group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I really admire the attention that you all are putting on the employee experience and understanding how that will relate to customer experience. I think that you know um, companies have become very focused on customer experience, which of course is a good thing uh, and as it should be, but um, sometimes the correlation between employee experience and customer experience is overlooked. Um, and so you know, there's this effort to improve the customer experience at the expense sometimes of the employees instead of uh, along with their experience. And I think that the way you're looking at it, uh, SimCorp's looking at it, is absolutely the right way. It's it's the only sustainable way, right? I mean, you you need to be able to continue to um, attract and, and hire and retain good talent and giving them, you know, a, a positive experience as, as a valued employee is the only way to do that. So I like that you've prioritized that in the big picture, um, and understand, you know, the role of that for the company. So, all right. Well, Mari, thank you so much for, for joining me and sharing today. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can find more by visiting us at futureoffieldservice.com. You can also find us on LinkedIn as well as Twitter at The Future of FS. The Future of Field Service podcast is published in partnership with IFS. You can learn more at ifs.com. As always, thank you for listening.